Hi everyone, welcome to World of Tanks with Stewie JP. I'm Stewie and this is the fourth episode of Pyro's recent Clan Wars campaign, the Steel Corridor Campaign 5 on the Asian server. And in this battle, and there'll be two battles in this video, this first battle that's Pyro versus Rebel on Miravanka. Still at tier 8, you can see Pyro's bought the majority of T-54 lightweights. You can see team efficiency scale, not pretty not going with the German light tank this game, probably because there's really nowhere to do boosts on Muravanka. They're also bringing a French artillery, a tier 8 American medium tank, the Pershing, and the new Patriot tank, the T26 E5 American heavy tank. Looking at the mini map, you can see that the majority of the Pyro players are hanging around off the back of this ridge here, with one T54 lightweight in the middle for a little bit of vision, trying to work out where these Rebel players are. Only two Rebel players have been spotted so far, an RU-251, the German light tank, and the T-54 lightweight. And the Pyro players keeping one eye on the mini-map and sort of hanging around the southeast side. But look, you can see on the mini-map a bunch of T-54 lightweights. Looks like they're going wide, but I think now that these light tanks have all been spotted, they're going to come back into the action. The skull's been spotted there, his six heads has gone off. And it looks like Rebels might be doing a little bit of a mini push here with those three light tanks, but here comes some more. There's an IS-3 backing up the light tanks. And it looks like a group of IS-3s pushing down the four line. But the Pyro guys have got the high ground. They've lost one of their light tanks. That was EB... EBPBX Geico. I don't know how to say that one, but that was the guy who was out at front providing some vision. Skull puts another shot into one of the IS-3s, a different IS-3 than he did last time. And now he's looking for another cheeky shot into a T-54 lightweight. Looks like Rebels have got a little bit heavier than Pyro in this game with three heavy tanks, but the rest are all light tanks, so they can... Light tanks can sort of swarm as they do. Looking at the mini map, they've got one T-54 lightweight over here. Pyro, artillery of course. They've got a few on the baseline. They're making sure that they don't get spotted. While the guys on the back of the hill continue to spot the rebel players. And hopefully those lights at the back are getting some nice cheeky snipey shots. And they want to get rid of this T-54 lightweight here. who looks like he's on his own. He's getting quite close to spotting the artillery. Not on his own now, he's, there's two of them. While the majority of the Pyro players continue to hang around on this ridge. And those two T-54 lightweights on the western side, they're down to low health. But so's Party, he's over there on his own. Party gets rid of one of them. And Maxi Mirza gets rid of the other one. So now it's back to an even ball game there. Looks like Pyro was in a little bit of trouble there, but they were using their, their armour and their health pretty well. The IS-3s have pushed around this corner and looks like the T-54 lightweights on the enemy side are playing around on top of the hill. Skull's lucky enough to be on pretty high health here and he's already done 1,962 hit points of damage as they continue to chip away at these T-54 lightweights and their IS-3s. One, one of the IS-3s has already been taken out of the game and Pyro takes it takes the T-54 lightweight down to a one-shot. So it's only really the RU-251 that's got much of a health, but some of these Pyro players are getting killed here, so they need to be careful, they need to be conservative with their hit points, and hopefully try and bog these players down so artillery can start dropping shit on their heads. The score is three apiece. Let's go looking for a bit of a snipey shot in one of those far T-54 lightweights, but they really need to get rid of these guys, because these guys here, that are playing around on the hill with the pyro players will be providing vision for these two T-54 lightweights in the background who are probably just sniping away and getting a little bit of cheap damage. Skull picks up his first kill, taking out another one of the T-54 lightweights and now he's going to go and help out Atlanta down under, make sure that he doesn't get taken down. Skell doing the right thing and going forward because he's the one with the health. The guy behind him on pretty low hit points, probably a one or a two shot. And Skell was lucky enough to get a free hit in there, didn't take any damage, but even the judge 
on the enemy side. Showed him his side and that was enough to take him out of the game. He picks up a third kill, bringing the score back to 8-3. And after what was looking like a little bit of a, an even ball game for a while, and even at one stage Pyro were down by two tanks, that little skirmish on the hill up here has really um, gone back to going Pyro's way. That T-54 lightweight in the magical forest is not going to be lonely for very much longer. And you can see Pyro has stuck one T-54 lightweight up in the corner just to make sure the other unspotted T-54 lightweight on the enemy side haven't, hasn't gone all the way back here to try and hide and, and play a bit of cat and mouse. But they're both spotted now. They're both down the bottom. Scalpy chuck kill number four. And then it's just a case of focus firing on the last remaining T-54 lightweight. And in the end, a comfortable win, 10-4. to four, After it was looking a little bit close earlier on, in the battle. As you look at the post-game battle results, it was a reasonably reasonably comfortable result in the end, 10 to 4, and not a bad spread of damage by all the pyro guys. The artillery probably it's always a it's always a gamble taking artillery in these tier 8 battles, especially if the enemy side are going to take a heap of light tanks. Very hard to hit the light tanks unless they're tracked and running around, but uh, you never know. With rebels sometimes they take a lot of heavies. And when an artillery player sees a heap of IS-3s or T-32s, he'll be licking his lips all day saying, you beauty, there's a little bit of free damage for me. And But in the end, a pretty healthy result by the Pyro lads winning, only losing four tanks in the end, even though they were down by one or two tanks earlier on in the game. As we move to the second game in this double shot of Tier 8 Clan Wars action featuring Pyro from the campaign number 5, Steel Corridor. This time they're on mines and they're playing against their old nemesis, Amiga. Probably Amiga, probably after Pyro, probably the most successful English speaking clan. I guess they, I've got the impression they're an English speaking clan. And this time, Skell's bringing his trusty old RU251. And you know what that's going to mean. That's going to mean. There's going to be a boost somewhere. Now they're on mines. Pyro have opted to go a little bit heavier in this replay. You can see they're bringing an IS-3 and T-3 T-32. It's a very popular American heavy tank at, in Tier 8 Clan Wars. They're very handy for poking over ridge lines. They've got a pretty good view range for a heavy tank. And that strong American turret. Now Skull's been spotted out here in his RU-251. And six of the Amiga players have also been spotted. Three heavies and three light tanks. And you can see Amiga going with a a common lineup, I guess you would say, with IS-3s, at least one T-32 and some light tanks. The T-54 lightweight, as well as some of the other light tanks, seem to have been the go in Tier 8 Clan Wars ever since Tier 8 Clan Wars started. The, especially the T-54 lightweight's been very, a very, very popular choice from clans all over the world. Now at the moment you can see on the minimap where all the tanks are, where all the pyro tanks are, and you can see they've comprehensively grabbed that hill in the middle of mines, which is a very popular strategy to use on this map. Skell just sort of kicking back at E4. That could be, it could be directing the team, he might be calling this, and waiting to see what Amiga do. And of course, um, working out some kind of plan, I guess. You can see on the minimap, two of the T-54 lightweights are moving back, probably to come down the one line onto this island, with Party over there, near the lighthouse by himself. Skell just rolling down the hill, probably going to go and join him there, or maybe he's going to do something completely different. Let's wait and see. You know when Skell brings his RU-251, Boosts are never out of the equation. There's me old mate Gunny B. One of the funniest blokes to ever play the game. And he's bringing his trusty T-32 American Heavy Tank. And now they've established, you can see on the minimap where all those tanks were spotted. You know, a few T-54 lightweights down the southwestern little mini island. A T-32 in the centre. And a couple of, a couple of other tanks at the base of the hill. Pyro still have a good presence on this hill, and if 
if the Amiga guys push this direction, the normal direction to go up the hill, well these heavy tanks should be able to take care of whatever pushes around this corner. But here he comes, Gal saying, and righty-o, we've been sitting around for three minutes and it's time for a boost. Climbs up here, take note of this, you can try this in random battles, it is very fun to do, but it's very hard to get right, it does take a little bit of practice. And so what Skull's trying to do here is get a different angle on the enemy side, and also also vision. There's Madhouse, and he's been set on fire, obviously doesn't have an automatic fire extinguisher, and of course, always good to take the commander out in a clan wars battle. You may or may not know, Amiga has recently disbanded and their Madhouse and his crew are off for bigger and better things. I think they're going to be creating a new clan very soon. Maybe they have. By the time this video is up, they probably already have. Now, Skell getting into a very different position here on Mines. You might not have seen this before. Where he climbs up, takes the boost, as you saw, climbs up the hill, and this is to get vision over whatever tanks might still be going there. Takes a bit of a punt there, putting a shot into the back of the IS-3, but he doesn't get lit. So he's probably thinking, you're guilty. This could be this could be free damage all day if I can continue to shoot these tanks and not get lit. I mean, a good chance these heavy tanks are spotting these IS-3s anyway. Gets, another, gets a shot into the T-32, and this T-32, it, he just doesn't know what to do here. He hasn't really got anywhere to go, to be fair. And Skell knows he hasn't been spotted. So all he's going to do is... So I'll take this free damage. Of course, firing heat into the tracks of the T-32. It's not always going to penetrate. But when he gets the angle right, he's going to continue to take this T-32 down. T-32, not even wasting his time fixing his tracks because he doesn't know where these shots are coming from and we know that because Skell's sixth sense has not gone off. Takes him down to 371 health and it should be Let's see if he can reload before he gets behind that rock. He can't but he has been spotted here so even though Skell didn't pick up the kill on that occasion he's taken one of their heavy tanks down to a one shot for any tank on their team. Pyro not going with artillery in this battle, instead opting for a more safe option of four heavy tanks and six light tanks. Now Skell knows that he was getting spotted when he was poking over that other side of the ridge, but now he moves up here. Just going to put a few blind shots into where he thinks possibly their artillery might be going when you see on the scoreboard, unknown. Scruffy Trap, unknown, Scruffy Trap being the player's name, unknown, a very good chance that that is artillery. All that means is somebody's done damage who has not yet been spotted. So, Skell looking for a little bit of vision on the southern side of the map to try to maybe spot out the artillery and take him out of the game. But he wasn't successful on that occasion, but you never know what might happen. The score's 1-0. to zero. Skell's already picked up 2,000 hit points of damage, and you can see that that looked like an artillery shell just dropped onto Nomad there. Or it might have been one of these guys shooting at him, but I doubt they'd have shots on him there. And that tells us that good chance artillery is going to be there. But these heavy tanks, which is there, Gunny B, F Vision, Serby, and Little Timmy. Those heavy tanks in this area of the map, that's they're going to comprehensively stop these two or three heavy tanks pushing through, especially considering we know that one of them is a one-shot, and those IS-3s looks like look like they've taken a fair amount of damage too. So we're on the halfway mark, seven and a half minutes to go until the battle times out. The score's still one to zero. Pretty good chance he got lit there. The enemy just fired towards Skell up on that boost. Party gets taken out on the one line and you can see on the one line three D54 lightweights. Very lucky to bounce a shot from the AMX 5100 there and 
look at the mini-map, please. Pyro have decided now's the time to go. So these guys are wrapping around to try and clean up these heavy tanks at the base of the mines. While Skull stays up in this elevated position to, to continue shooting at these tanks from a totally different perspective. Artillery gets taken out, so Skell moves right down here and to maintain vision on these tanks. And now these heavy tanks and light tanks on the pyro side are pushing over. This reads straight into these lights as pyro comes around to try and take out the tier 8 French autoloader, the AMX 5100, who looks like he was probably reloading then because he did fire a few shots. He was unlucky enough to bounce a shot into the RU251 and now... All Skell's doing now is making the most of this opportunity while the main force pushes over and whatever enemy tanks are left are probably aiming this way. Skell's going to wrap around and clean up some of these enemy tanks. He's still on full health, so he knows he can afford to take a shot from this RHM who's only on 542 hit points, but he won't need to because the RHM, the Rhymer Tools, just fired a shot and he knows, especially when he's sitting away from his gun, that his reload time on his light tank is going to comprehensively beat the RHM, the tier 8 tank destroyer. And in the end, another pretty handy win by the boys from Pyro, winning, I think it was 10 to 4. Looking at the post game battle results, again, an, another great spread of damage from the Pyro guys. Um, of course, this, that's why Skell sent me this replay. He's, he top damage comfortably with five kills, uh, but plenty of other players doing between one or two thousand damage. The old mate Gunny B had a pretty good game as well with two thousand hit points of damage, but don't tell him I said that, otherwise his head will get too big. But all the other players definitely played their part. They all pushed well together. They all worked well as a team, and in the end, that's why they beat Amiga, probably one of the more successful English-speaking clans on the Asian server. Anyway, that's the last replay for the tier 8s from Pyro. And there were two games, Muravanka versus Rebel and Mines versus Omega. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope everyone's Christmases was good and we'll be bringing you some more tier 10 action in the new year. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care and see you all next time.